Hi everybody, a dangerous storm situation setting up over the next few days with a high risk for tornadoes across multiple states. This is a situation where you need to stay weather aware and please, if you can, share this with anybody that could be in the path of this storm. Tag them in the video, message it to them. We need to let as many people know about this storm system as possible. This is going to be a multi-day event that's going to impact so many across the South and the Midwest. It starts with a high risk of severe weather tomorrow, especially tomorrow evening into tomorrow night across the Midwest, including the risk for strong EF2 or greater tornadoes. Then that threat shifts to millions across the Deep South, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and yes, even the Carolinas could be involved in this as this line begins to move off toward the West. We're going to be watching it very closely. So please, if you don't already, the best way that you can stay informed right now is to subscribe to channels like this. Like this video, subscribe, leave me a comment in the comment section with where you're watching from and hit that little bell to turn on notifications. That way you can be uh, informed if any kind of warning pops up, any kind of watches. I'm going to be on top of it here for you. You can see a telltale sign with this map here beside of me as we look at the pink colors across the middle part of the country. That is as the wind starts to pick up. This low pressure could break records for how low it gets. The lowest pressure we've ever had recorded in St. Louis is 977 millibars. This thing bombs out from near 1,000 to around 977. That's a drop of pressure like you would see in a hurricane, folks. This thing is a potent, potent severe weather maker. And unfortunately, it's going to present the risk for significant severe weather across many. So let's outline it here for you moment by moment. I'm going to give you an outline of where this is going to go and what time and what the threat will be county by county, state by state. So please tag your friends in this and let me know where you're watching from. We need to watch this in the Carolinas very closely here. It's one of those situations where a few things go a different way. We could have a higher risk for severe weather as well. That red is a very high risk. You don't see that issued very often. Uh, that is across parts of Missouri, Illinois, down to Tennessee. This area could have a high risk for severe weather, including, as you see here, tornadoes. This is a 1 in 10 shot. You're going to get a tornado. But the hatched area here shows that if you do get a tornado, it would likely be an EF2 or stronger. So you pick a map, point on a map in here. Within a 25 mile radius, there's a one in 10 shot of a tornado. And not only just a tornado, but a strong EF2 tornado. Folks, these are the outbreaks that we look for in the spring. This is a classic telltale sign of a potent system beginning to move our way. And it could present the risk of a major tornado outbreak in some areas. Then we turn our attention to Saturday. Saturday, that threat is over similar areas. So it could be a one round, two round type event for Mississippi and Alabama. But same story, a very high risk issued. You, again, don't see that issued very often across uh, the country. Maybe a handful of times a year, three to five times a year is when you'll see this. So this is one of those big ones that we have to stay dialed in on across many areas as this could be a very dangerous situation. In events like this, the goal of broadcasters, the goal of the National Weather Service, the Storm Prediction Center, emergency management is to prevent loss of life. And the best way that you can do that is to stay informed and to inform those that you love and care about. Okay. So arming you here with the information you need to do that uh, in Alabama, Mississippi. Now the high risk does stretch into Western North Carolina, Western parts of the upstate, North Georgia. This area could have high winds. And yes, we can't rule out a tornado risk there either. Then Sunday, we're in day four here. So the risk is just more of a broad stroke. But the eastern parts of the Carolinas, Georgia, into Virginia, up through Washington even, into New York, could have a risk of severe weather as well because this line will be moving through at the warmest part of the day. Let's look town by town at this and where it goes and how this risk unfolds over the next several days here. Looking closer at it here as we go into Friday afternoon, this is going to be the low pressure deepening here. So as we see that happen over parts of Missouri, it's going to really take life. Now out ahead of this, we are worried about what's called discrete supercells. You hear us say that sometimes in severe weather events, severe weather season. 
This would be segments or lines or even cells that are out by themselves. When they're by themselves, they're more vulnerable to rotate. And if we get them to rotate, that would present the risk of a supercellular uh, storm that could produce a large and violent tornado. That would likely be out ahead of the main line. Now, the line itself could certainly have tornadic activity. But here we are Friday evening at 8 p.m., this unfortunately looks to be a Friday night event for so many across the South. Nighttime tornadoes are so, so dangerous. But for Mississippi, Missouri, Louisiana, up through Illinois, this could be a serious, serious situation as it rolls on through. Embedded in this main line could be tornadoes, but yes, out ahead of that could be tornadic activity. This is Friday night. This is round one. Going into Saturday, round two starts to develop. We're in the morning hours here. Could have some fierce storms across northwest Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama. It's going to be this area here that's highlighted for the risk of tornadoes on Saturday. Notice how these colors are going to brighten up as we go during the day on Saturday. We've got some rain entering the picture in western North Carolina. Likely just rain at that point. Some scattered downpours here and there. But notice this thing's taking another life form back toward the west because we're at the warmest part of the day. This is now 2 p.m. on Saturday. We're cranking things up in Mississippi and Alabama. The risk for a second round of tornadoes coming in. And Saturday could be a little bit worse in some locations. I'm seeing signs here right there, right there, all around Birmingham, north and west of Birmingham, south and west of Birmingham could have supercell tornadoes. That's the concern here. Middle Tennessee, Nashville included, back through Memphis. This is really taking a dangerous look here. And then it consolidates into some big mean line here. This would be Saturday at 6 p.m. watching Memphis, watching Mississippi, watching Alabama. Here it comes. And this is as far as my high resolution model gets us to 8 p.m. on Saturday. Now that main line would be what we watch. Does it have embedded tornadoes? Are there tornadoes out ahead of it? Both are possible. I do have another model that has less resolution, but it's the it's the rest of the story. Remember Paul Harvey? Well, this is the rest of the story here as we go past Saturday at 8 p.m. This model gives us an idea, not as great a resolution, but you get the picture. Here we are at 2 a.m. The line is still back through Birmingham. So the timing here is still that 5 a.m. through 10 a.m. time frame across western North Carolina and the upstate of South Carolina. Here we are 5 a.m. It's moving into East Tennessee and the Atlanta metro area. And then 6, 7, 7, 8 a.m., it's moving into the upstate. Now, does it have enough fuel to stay potent? That's the million dollar question for areas east. I know it's going to be potent back to the west. Again, Friday evening, you've probably got tornado concerns from Illinois, Missouri, down to Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. That's round one of tornadoes. Round two of tornadoes would likely start to ramp up on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. You've got 3,000 plus Cape. Folks, 1,000 would be enough. This would be round two of tornadoes, possibly starting in Mississippi, then moving into Alabama as we go into Saturday night. Notice we have four, 500 joules of Cape across the Western Carolinas, about 600 in, in Atlanta. That's enough for some storms, but honestly, you need a little bit more to get us through that. What about the tornado risk? Folks, this is honestly almost off the charts for some areas back to the west on Friday. Round one of tornado threats would be uh, starting Friday evening. You got out of a scale of 10, you've got a, a tornado index of a six and a seven. Those not only tell me the likelihood of a tornado, but the severity of them. There could be some violent, large, long track tornadoes in these areas going into Friday night. Saturday, I mean, look at this folks. That's a 10. That is a 10 out of a 10 of a tornado risk. I've, I've not seen that in a few years, to be honest with you. Uh, so that would be Missouri, parts of Arkansas, um, in, into parts of Illinois, maybe even into Indiana and Kentucky. Uh, that's about as high as it gets. That threat starts to wane as you go into Saturday morning. Still a threat in Mississippi and Alabama, but look how this starts to ramp back up going into Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening. Folks, you have I didn't even know you could get an 11. I mean, my scale down here goes to a 10. So, so honestly, off the charts.
you have an off the charts tornado risk here across Mississippi. Um, I didn't know that was, I mean, I, I say off the charts, but this is literally off my chart. <laughs> you got an 11, you got a 12. Folks, I, I'm used to seeing threes, fours, and fives and, and getting tornadoes out of it. So Mississippi, folks, uh, you know, please be aware. Please share this with your friends, your family in Alabama, Mississippi. This is going to be a long night, Saturday into Saturday night. Uh, that threat is especially great south and west of Birmingham. You got 10s, 12s, 13s out of a scale that I thought went to 10. Apparently, it goes higher if it dictates it, right? So this model is saying uh, not only the high likelihood of tornadoes, but the likelihood that they're strong, long-track, violent tornadoes. So I can also look at one more product that I want to show you here. This is the, the tornado tracks. Similar to snow forecasting, folks, I have the ability to give you more granular details as we get closer to an event. Uh, so as we're four or five days out, I can tell you states that are going to get severe weather. I can give you a broad brush. When we're two, three days out, I can tell you specifically how violent those tornadoes are going to be and how many there could be. And in this case, I know that information for Missouri, uh, for uh, Illinois. Look at this. This is through Friday. I not only look at the severity of the tracks, that, those tell me the numbers uh, here, how intense the rotation is, but the number of them. These would represent the potential, not an exact science, but the potential of tornadoes and tornado touchdowns. Now, some of these would be a tornado that would touch down, it would lift, it would touch down, it would lift. Uh, but you have several different swaths here through Illinois, parts of Missouri, parts of Arkansas, that would get in on tornado risks going into Friday. Now that Friday threat is also for Mississippi and Alabama, but the real action for tornadoes, I'm afraid, on Friday is going to be up here. Saturday, that threat is solidly placed across Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, and maybe even into Georgia. Let's advance it out through Saturday. Folks, this thing's not playing around. Notice the difference in Friday's colors. You had some greens, maybe some blues, but here on Saturday... You're getting, you know, here was the max capacity on Friday uh, of spin rotation. You're getting some reds and some oranges, almost double the potential of, of, of severity of tornadic activity uh, on Saturday for Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. Now that threat does try to move off toward the east. And again, we have an idea of what that looks like based on our computer models of where, when, how do we have that instability? You need fuel for thunderstorms. I know that it's ripping and roaring back through Mississippi and Alabama, even into West Georgia. But does that translate into the Western Carolinas? The models are saying not really. Now, I don't want you to let your guard down because we're still under an elevated risk of severe weather. You don't need much fuel when you have uh, a, a, a tremendous amount of wind energy. So all it will take is a little bit of fuel. We've done a lot more with a lot less, if you know what I mean. But this model showing the fuel sits around 200. Let's look at the Europeans' fuel. Um, certainly some lightning and some loud noise coming through. Time frame on this would be somewhere between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. on on Sunday morning for the Western Carolinas. The European model wants to paint four, five, 600. That's plenty. That's all you'd need in combination with strong wind energy. Now, if you had moderate wind energy and weak fuel, you probably wouldn't get much. But when you have a high amount of one and a little amount of the other, it, it counteracts. Same story. If you had a tremendous amount of fuel but only a little bit of wind energy, that could also give you a severe threat. Let's look at our high resolution model with the NAM. It just came in. Uh, giving you a, a indication of Sunday morning, 8 a.m., you've got, you know, two, three, 400 joules of CAPE, which is fuel. Not much, but back through Mississippi, Alabama, it's 2,000, it's 1,500. Atlanta Metro watching you, four, 500. So yes, there is a threat. My take home here for you, if I'm summizing it up, and I'll zoom out and show you my map here, um, the tornado threat here is is really multi-state, and yes, it does get into the Carolinas, but my point here is right in here is where you're going to have your most significant tornado threats. Could you get one east of there into the Carolinas? Absolutely, but right now, the risk is much, much, much higher 
to the west. And again, as I showed you, off the charts tornado parameters that I haven't seen in a few years, folks. So again, the reminder here is to stay weather aware, is to have a way to receive those warnings, and I'm going to keep you posted. So whatever page you're watching from right now, please like this video, subscribe, turn on notifications, and please let me know in the comment section where you're watching from. Tag a friend. Tag a friend that lives in Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia, or even here in the Carolinas. Just let them know, hey, you need to stay down in on this. And any kind of changes that come in, whether the threat goes higher, the threat goes lower, we will let you know. I'm going to have another one of these videos later on today because I'll have a new suite of computer models that come in that hone in this. But if you're watching right now in the upstate South Carolina, Western North Carolina, uh, what we're looking at here is a is a solid Sunday morning threat. Could there be a storm before that? Yes, but that 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. time frame looks to be where we're honing in on. And yes, it could be potent as it rolls through. But I'm telling you, much more significant stuff back through Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Missouri, Illinois, could be unfortunately a violent night of tornadoes both Friday and Saturday during the day. I will keep you posted, folks. Prayers are with everybody as you prepare for this. The best way you can prepare is just to stay informed. Have a way to receive those warnings. Should a tornado warning strike, get to the interior part of your home, away from windows. Don't be traveling in this and just stay armed with the information you need to stay safe.